Red Dreaded Nation, this is Holly Quinn saying you better tune in or we'll bust your neck open. <laughs> Comics Plus, what is going on? My name is Akasan. How are you guys doing? I hope you're doing well. We're about to go beyond our expectations and interview the casting crew of Batman Beyond. It's coming out this month on home and digital. You gotta check it out. One of my favorite series. I'm dressed to the T for it all. Let's go ahead and see what the casting crew thinks about Batman Beyond. Joined your Comic Con so far? Yeah, I just got in last night, so I actually missed the first couple days. But you guys having fun? Oh yeah, <laughs> <It's excellent. laughs> no, that's great. I've, I've never done it before. I've only been to the one in San Diego, which is also large. You guys are great. <laughs> no, I'll no, start any time. Okay, thanks, Gary. I guess the easy thing to start with is. Uh, when this show started, there weren't a lot of animated series that had the kind of acclaim that you guys gathered. Do you have any inkling, like at what point did you know that, oh shoot, we're going to be talking about this in 20 years? Oh, wow. Huh. I'm not sure I was ever really aware of that until like social media started more and, and I realized how many fans there were because, you know, in 1999, we're, we're like, did, were there Twitter and all of that? Think so. no, I don't think so. This no, was like before no. social media. Yeah, yeah. So it really kind of grew uh, as the internet grew, I think, and, and then I became much more aware. But it was certainly exciting to be part of such a big, colossal, epic, you know, storyline with such a built-in fan base. For sure, yeah. How aware were you of the Batman Beyond Mythos when you first started the program? Um, I, I had seen the movies for sure, and I, I watched the you know the TV series. I'm a lot older than you, probably, <laughs> but um, growing up and like with Adam West and, and you know like just loving that and being very excited that you know uh, that uh, Batman was going to have a, an Asian girlfriend. That was very exciting because there there weren't very many people you know like of color for me to relate to when I was growing up, and so even though it's animated. You know, it still was great because she was drawn Asian, and you know, so I just look. Oh, they made me look so good. I better try to <laughs> try a little harder. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I was aware of it. What was the audition process like? Uh, oh, you know, um, Alan Burnett just told me a great story because uh, you know usually they just call you in like a regular audition when I'm auditioning for something on screen or animated your agent kind of sets it up for you and then um, Alan said that when uh, Bruce heard my voice because um, obviously they don't see what we look like when we're they're just listening he said oh okay that's it that's what I want so that was really nice to hear because uh, I think that creators usually have some sort of vision in their mind um, or a sound just the way they want it to sound and they don't know what it is until the person walks in so that was a, a very nice thing to hear that that uh, that naturally, like whatever my voice sounded like, matched up with what he was imagining. So that was lucky. What was your first days like when you were recording the lines? I'm sorry. What was the sorry, first day um, like? What was your first days like when you were recording the lines? Um, you know what? The the great thing about recording this show was that we did it as a radio play, so that we did we did it all together, so we could do it live and play off of each other as if we were doing a scene instead of going in individually to record all by yourself. It's, it's really hard because Andre is brilliant, our director, our voice director, um, but there's only so much she can do like to, to kind of recreate the, the natural chemistry that, that happens between people and stuff. So, it, you know, it was really just good to get to know Will too, since he was my boyfriend, you know, like <laughs> just to know how funny, what a sweet guy he was. It just all helped with the chemistry. Do you, do you prefer uh, dramatic voice work like this show or comedic voice work like the future? Um, you know, I really enjoy both. Uh, I like to switch it off now, you know, like alternate because it, it's sort of as an artist you, you can explore more places. Like if I wasn't doing this, I'd probably miss being able to do something with more substance. 
Gotcha. And if, yeah. And the other way around, too. <laughs> if it was just all, like, dramatic, then then I would miss being goofy. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I love doing both. Do you find it different to um, build chemistry with your cast and voice acting than you do in, um, like, stage acting? Not at all. Video? So Not chemistry is the same. It's, it's really very... To me, you know, voice acting is is pretty much just like acting on camera. You just have to put everything into your voice. So it, it's kind of a lot more focused and channeled um, in that way. But like when, when I watch my coworkers and stuff, they're so animated and doing it completely full out in order to, to get that authenticity and the realism of it. Because you could just phone it in but it wouldn't be as alive. And, and uh, what's great is that you don't have to memorize the lines too, so that's that's really a nice plus. Yeah. Is there any particular episode oh, that, that you recorded that sticks out in your mind of a so, favorite? The rat one. Do you remember when Dana? I don't know if you remember, but she gets caught in like the sewer with like a ton of rats. Yeah, I remember I, that one. Yeah, do you remember that one? It was like, oh, it was so creepy. But but it was, and he was controlling them by remote control or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was uh, that was kind of like more like a, a Dana heavy episode because um, Alan just told me that I was in about a third of them, but that but it was more about. You know, you missed our date again. You know, and um, but that one was more like for my character. Yeah. Now, Kevin, right? I don't know if you know, Kevin right now is actually live-action Bruce Wayne in a thing. Is that something that you'd ever be interested in doing? Is taking this character into like one of the CW shows or something? Well, wouldn't that be amazing? But I think I'm too old now. I mean, you know, like they're supposed to be so young and everything. I don't know. Well, but Kevin, everybody progresses. That's true. But if Kevin is his age, right? So. <laughs> I mean, what's the alternative? <laughs> well, what other DC character would you want to play um, if, it, if it wasn't for that, like, just jumping off that? Oh, that's that's interesting. Wait, so DC characters are like Superman and, right? Yeah. Because I get confused between Marvel and DC. <laughs> My kids have it all straight. <laughs> but, so the DC world is... Batman, Superman, Superman. What, and DC what is Justice yeah. League, Marvel is Avengers. Yeah, basically. Yep, that's a good one. Yeah. Say it again. DC is Justice League, Marvel is Avengers. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Well, I mean, you know, like, I don't know, I don't think it gets, I, I guess it would be better to be like a superhero, right? A woman su superhero rather than yeah. the hero's girlfriend, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So, so wait, so Justice League is Wonder Woman? Yes. Yeah, yeah and yeah, that, that was pretty great. Wasn't that just Brie Larson? Who, who was that? Uh, that was Captain Marvel. G yeah, that's Captain Marvel. That was Captain Marvel? Yeah. Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot, is, uh, yeah. Oh, Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot. Yes. Right, right. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and so the animated beautiful. one was Rosario Dawson yesterday. Yep. Yesterday. Oh, yeah. was that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Anyway. Can I touch on that then? Since yeah. You, since you did first, um, can you talk about maybe the diversity that you're seeing in, in the last 10 years with um, men and women or anyone of color <laughs> or, you know, well, I just think it's getting better and better, you know, as we go for on-screen and animated. And I think it needs to keep going in that direction for sure. But when you think about, like, the, I'm so glad that the creator thought of writing it that way 20 years ago. Because, you know, you sh certainly could have written it just, you know. When I was on Friends, I think I was, like, the only person of color on that show until Aisha Taylor came in t to do an episode or two. But... You know, it's just time, and, and I think that it, that the movement is just growing, and people are m more vocal about complaining about it, and, and I think that it's great that, like, the younger generations with cartoons and on screen, I just, I was on a Disney series for the last three years where everybody was represented. I mean, we had, you know, like, a, a black gal and a gay guy, and like, a deaf girl, and it's like, there, there was something for everybody to be able to relate to, and I, I think that that's the future, and that's the way I like to see people, so that we don't feel so alone, mm -hmm. like, each one of us is so, you know, unique, and, and so... It's just better to have more opportunities to, to have someone to relate to. Yeah. So, since, since you shifted to so much voice work, um, is that why you wear such cool shoes? When you're <laughs> 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 Everybody exactly. should <laughs> My shoes. Like, it's because I'm oh, so man. tiny. Oh, yes. I love those. <laughs> pretty comfortable, actually. 
Thank you for noticing. <laughs> now, you, oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay, okay. Uh, you mentioned Friends. Were you aware that one of your, your old castmates is actually doing a DC show? Well, who? Uh, why the Last Man is bringing back the monkey that played Marcel. <laughs> <laughs> that's a true thing. Oh God, that's a true thing? <laughs> yeah. He's wow. coming out of retirement, apparently. Is that right? Yeah. Oh my god, what's next? I don't know. Someone was talking about Paul Rudd being here, and they and I said, oh, he's great in Ant-Man, but he was amazing in Friends. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we've had so many amazing guest stars on this show, and then Friends as well, and they, they just had their 25th anniversary. That's true. Right. So that was a big deal, too. Um, yeah, I just feel really lucky to have been a part of these iconic shows. Superman too. I was on. Last question. Okay, um, but yeah, I, this has just been nothing but a gift, really. So. What's your finest memories when you were on Futurama? <laughs> well, you know, Futurama took a while to record because those guys are just so hilarious. It's almost like they're stand-up comedians, each one of them. So it would take us a while because they were always riffing and goofing, and and Matt Groening brought the entire cast of Futurama into Disenchantment. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen that one, but, but it, you know, we don't all have, like, regular parts, obviously, but, but just, like, incidentals and recurring, and then, so this season I play Mop Girl and Trixie. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was super fun. And, and, and Phil Lamar is God. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.